Hello! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Even so, though it's November. It's November, yeah. <laughs> We're recording right, this right. in November, but I, I've got to edit this, so, uh, you know, we need time to do that. So, we thought we would treat you to another commentary. Uh, lucky you. Yeah, lucky you. Yeah. Let's see us again. Both, another collab <laughs> video. Um, so, you know, hopefully this is going to go out around about Christmas. Say that. Power of the Daleks was supposed to go out when Evil of the Daleks came out, uh, and... Uh, at the moment, it's near the end of November, and you haven't seen it yet. So I do apologise about that, but hopefully by the time you see this, you would have seen that. Yeah, get your shit together. Uh, yeah. Today, um, the commentary, as you know, because of the thumbnail and the title, is going to be our first new series story, which is the Christmas Invasion, mm. which is of course the first Christmas Doctor episode. If you don't count the the Fish of Stephen, which, oh that classic. Oh. You know, it's going to be pretty hard to do because it doesn't exist. So this is the next best thing. So um, we haven't seen this story in a long, long time. I- I'm not sure when you last time you saw this. But well, I've seen because of the power of YouTube. I've seen clips now and then. If I'm okay. in a Doctor Who mood, I might stick on the, the the sword fight at the end. But this is a weird time for the show because obviously it come back. Series one's really successful. I think as soon as Rose went out, they they said, "Yep, yeah, we're commissioning an, an, uh, a second series." Yeah, and they put the budget up, and all of a sudden, you know. Behind the scenes stuff doesn't go quite to plan. Chris Eccleston leaves, so all of a sudden Russell's like, "Oh, God, I've just brought back Doctor Who, and I've lost the Doctor." Yeah. <laughs> so he has to go find another Doctor, uh, and he manages it. He pulls it off. Fair play to him. Um, and I actually heard that was it was quite difficult because he wrote this with Eccleston in mind mm. in the script, so he didn't have time to change the script for Tennant. So a lot of um, Tennant's uh, personality that's all him. Okay. okay. Russell didn't say, "Oh, I want it this way, this way." He didn't have time, so yeah, a lot of just... it. Yeah. So we've got to credit to David Tennant. A lot of his characteristics, at least early on for his Doctor, was all down to him because he had Eccleston's lines, but he had to make it his own sort of thing. Be like the same way how Tom Baker had pretty much Pertwee's lines yes. in from Robot, because that was almost a Pertwee story. Yeah. Um, similar sort of thing. But yeah, it's a it's, it's fascinating looking back of how difficult it would have been back then especially for Russell and, and the, you said this you know. is um, about 15, 16 years old now didn't you this yeah story 16 years this year up. if I'm right yeah Yeah. so uh, yeah so it's quite an old one as I said I haven't seen this story in five years maybe even longer oh wow so uh, there's not much I can remember to be honest with you um, so I'm just going to go into it uh, with an open mind um, I remember mm. enjoying it as a kid definitely mm. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just going to go into open minded and uh, yeah, and, and go from there pretty much. Yeah, we'll just have a bit of fun with it because at the end of the day, it's a Christmas special, so it's yeah. going to be like more epic and more fun. It's not your average episode, and especially being a first Christmas special, they're going to want to make an impression, aren't they? So definitely, this is the shot from Rose. It is. I think they use it quite a lot. They use it in the next Christmas special, if I'm right as well. I think so. The Runaway yeah. Bride. Yeah, it's a great shot, inspired by Spearhead from Space as well. Because, you know, you get the shot in Spearhead. Yes. The, uh, Jackie Tyler. She's brilliant in, you know, in the series. She She's is, just such yeah. a good cockney mum. <laughs> and you get elements of Jackie really missing Rose. Um, it's not a particularly popular story, but in Love and Monsters, you get that whole thing with her and she gets you get to see her side of things yeah. from her perspective of having Rose not be there and be, like, worrying about her. Is the character of Mickey. I'd say this is more in his like transitional stage. He's not the, the wimp he was in Rose, but he's not what he becomes in yes. Doomsday yet, is yeah. he? He's sort of... That, that mid, midway yeah, between. Transitioning with his character arc. Did you watch Born Again? The Minnesota, the set before this? Uh, yeah, I think I did, yes. It's, yeah. So the Doctor's basically gone crazy with the TARDIS because of the post-regeneration thing. Yeah. It's a good little. Um, that, that was that was a that was a children in need special or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I didn't see that till years later, and I was like, "What? I've never seen this." <laughs> well, I found one standing in the background. No one was like, "Oh my god!" A I'm police spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised gonna, the postman I'm, hasn't I'm come out. Call the gone, police. Yeah, I'm surprised the postman's come out. Go, Oi! You crashed into my van. That's the doctor. What do you mean that's the doctor? Doctor Who. <gasps> she said it. I thought I knew him, Mum. What do you think of the romantic side of Rose and the Doctor? Do you mind that or? Um, 
I mean, I mean, I, I, if you sort of think about it, Rose is what like a nineteen, twenty year old yeah. woman, and the Doctor is a nine hundred odd year old Time Lord. So uh, it just wouldn't happen, and it and it won't work in my opinion because of that factor alone. Yeah, well, I always thought of the Doctor being like above falling it not above it but yeah I don't mind the doctor like being fond of Rose and like, yeah. you know and, like, like loving Rose in a sense that oh you know she's my best friend mm. uh, you know for the moment but like he says in um, is it school reunion he goes well look you can't spend the rest of your life with me exactly. because I'm you know you're going to get old and I'm just going to go on yeah, the way yeah. I am sort of thing and well, that's it. exactly the reason why it just doesn't work yeah I'm surprised you don't give up on me. No, well, that's the thing, isn't it? You can rely on me. I don't go changing my face. Yeah. I do like their raw reaction to regeneration. They're just like, what the heck? What, what's happened? Yeah. <laughs> like Ben and Polly in Power of the Daleks. They're like, are you the Doctor or not? Like, what's, what? <laughs> this is the first time the um, the robot Santa's there. Yeah, the... Introduced, isn't it? They call them pilot fish or something? They have, like, yeah, some, robot something forms. like that, yeah. They have, like, different names for them. I've got to say, I think I prefer them in their second appearance. They're a bit more intimidating because you get to see the, the proper robot underneath yeah. as well. I think the design is slightly different. I mean, only if so slightly. It is, Only yeah. a sad, boring person like myself would, would notice the, the slight difference. And myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the slight difference in design. Well, I think but... I probably remember more. I, yeah, they, yeah, they've got... Their, their design is a bit more creepy in the second one. <laughs> this is a great thing about Doctor Who. Only in Doctor Who do people dress up as Santa in the market and then all of a sudden there's a flamethrower in a <laughs> trumpet. Like, it's so ridiculous, it's brilliant. <laughs> They're just getting shot at. <laughs> and a bazooka. Oof. I like that shot. Yeah. It shows they're not human. Yeah. You know. Well, the director, um, James Hawes, uh, he went on to do Black Mirror okay. later on, um, and he won a, quite a lot of awards for it, and oh, he's right. a very good director. So I looked up who directed this, I wasn't, I wasn't sure, and I, I thought it might be you know, Euros Lin, I might be yeah, pronouncing yeah, yeah, that wrong, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I thought, I don't think it is, because the way it's shot is not quite the way, because Euros Lin... Yeah, not quite his style. Yeah, he shoots yeah. it quite wide, and quite, uh, these big epic shots, like mm. Silence in the Library is massive CGI epic shots, whereas this yeah. one is more... Choppy. Yes. This is more, more intimate, it's right? Choppy, yes. yeah, but yeah, more more intimate. A little bit more like Graham Harper. Not not quite the same, but similar. It's Christmas Eve, we're not going anywhere. What are you babbling about? Where'd you get that tree? That's a new tree. That's a CGI tree. <laughs> <laughs> that tree CGI? Where'd you get that one from? <laughs> Gotta say, I find this scene really cringy and a bit silly. I know it's Doctor Who and it's a family show, but just with the Christmas music and everything, it's just a bit much. A bit <laughs> that, that, that is, yeah, that, that's, that is funny. That, I mean, it's just stupid. You can't take that seriously. Yeah, with the Christmas music, it just makes it like, yeah. a comedy uh, piece rather than. I know. Uh, Honestly, this feels not a detriment to the Sarah Jane Adventures, but it just feels like a scene out of Sarah Jane yeah. Adventures. You'd expect this to be in their attic and Clyde is. Uh, brought in this Christmas tree or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and like Camille Cordry, she's a great actress, but she's so over well, the I top. Well, I think in no, this the bit. thing, the reason why it works as well, why it's quite funny, is because they're all playing it straight. Yeah, I, know, I think that's why it's funny as yeah, well. Yeah, but there's a bit in a minute where Camille Cordry, she really like. I'm gonna get killed by a tree. <laughs> it's so over the top. <laughs> we'll see it in a minute. It's just, oh, it's just cringy. I don't know. I, don't, I never liked this scene. Well, the music's sp sped up as well. I know. Oh, yeah. it's just daft. As soon as the doctor wakes up. Yeah, there you go. It's so over the top, isn't it? It's just... <laughs> Something simple. Bowl of soup. Nice bowl of soup. I'd have loved to have known how many takes it took to get this scene right. I bet they would have been cracking up. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Shh, oh, I need you to shut up. Oh, he hasn't changed that much. <laughs> I like the fact that something is, coming. Some, something is coming. I like the fact that they are just the advanced Rip. guard. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And this is very Russell T Davies, isn't it? Oh, the news. All, all the news. Yeah. And he, he makes the quality Trinity crap. Wells. Yeah, Trinity Wells. She doesn't actually get named until uh, the end of time, I believe. 
she's just news presenter. Yeah. And then it's but and the give final her a name. one. Yeah, so she finally gets a name, yeah. Well, I think, I think I imagine Russell went, for God's sake, she's been in so many, we may as well give her a bloody name by this point. Yeah. <laughs> Tower of London, Unit HQ. And that's funny because you think of Unit HQ being the Tower of London coming from like uh, Matt Smith's era. Yeah. But it actually started here. Yes, it did, yeah. I think is it oh that Chibnall one with the, the thing cubes is, though, Power of Three or something. I always thought um in this story, like the Tower of London was like some sort of government sort of science lab or you know, IT lab <laughs> and a unit has just come in and gone, Right aliens, we're we're taking charge here. Yeah, sort of yeah. Thing. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, because they've got units. Oh, yeah, yeah, they've yeah, got yeah, un unit, okay. um, Ignore me then. <laughs> <laughs> they've got unit signs everywhere. I like the fact as well for like the first half the cigarettes are introduced they're speaking their own language because the TARDIS translation isn't working so mm. then that sort of makes well them feel alien yes. it makes us feel slightly cut off because we didn't understand what the threat is what they're saying much like the characters exactly and, and then when we do finally get to hear what they say when the Doctor does come up it just you know just makes it all the more impactful. Definitely. Now yeah. it's like, okay, now now we know where we are. Now we yeah. can understand them. Yeah. I kind of wish, because he was still alive at this point, Nicholas Courtney was <laughs> Came in this. Yeah. It might have been a bit too much, but it's just sad to see. Because well, I'm looking at you. a minute in a wheelchair. <laughs> what the devil's going on here? Doctor. Who, who's in charge? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's sad when I see Unit in, in this part of the show. He's trapped in Geneva. You know, he's always trapped in Geneva at this point, isn't he? This planet is armed, and we do not surrender. I do like Harriet Jones. She's a great character. Mm. Well, she's she's a fighter, isn't she? She's yes. really like, it's like, no, I'm not having this. She's almost Churchill-esque. Yeah. Wartime Churchill, you know, because he, he'd put his foot down and say, no, we are not being invaded, we will fight to the end, you know. Exactly. It's, she's very much like that. Arthur Shelby! Or a I, I looked up this episode earlier just to refresh myself with some of the facts. And <laughs> he's like top billing, or like almost top oh, billing. Oh, is he? Just because he's. He's in it for like 30 seconds. Yeah, because he uh, plays Arthur Shelby. Yeah, because he's Anderson. famous now. He like They've got, oh yeah, uh, so and so is in this. I don't know the actor's name. Paul Anderson. Paul Anderson, yeah. Yeah, on IMDb or whatever I saw, you've got like David Tennant, Billy Piper, Paul Anderson. Paul Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Not any of these other characters. Russell, what he does really well, he really, he makes it relatable. Even though it's like an alien threat, the fact that a mother is terrified that her kid is now about to jump off a roof. Like, that's yeah. related. Well, it's not an everyday thing, but it makes you feel it. Because a mother sitting watching this, you go, oh, God, that could be my child. But, yeah. And it makes it, you feel it more then. Definitely. He has a way of of making it very, very scarily relatable. Yes. And bringing the threats to Earth. Yeah. Really and he does it in the do. right way as well, where it's brief, but effective. Yes. It works. Yeah, it's not overdone, is it? Another relatable thing Russell's thrown in there, the Queen's speech being cancelled and replaced by this because of the alien threat. Yeah. It was a conscious decision, wasn't it, at this time when Doctor Who came back to shoot it in standard definition rather than oh, okay. um, high definition. I didn't actually know that. But yeah. that makes sense now because I always look back at these older episodes and think the quality's not as good. Yes. I mean, I think high definition was around, but I think they thought, we'll throw in everything we can... But let's not waste high definition on this, just in case it fails. Yes, and it's more expensive as well, so yeah. they want to so save think, a bit of money. Was it um, Planet of the Dead, David, the, the Easter Christmas? Oh, it wasn't yeah, Christmas, yeah. Sorry, Easter, Easter special. Easter special, yeah, which yeah, David Tennant yeah. done. The, yeah, I think that was the first was that was... HD Doctor Who oh. episode. You know, now you say that, I look back on those on that episode and Waters of Mars, and they do look particularly better than the stuff that came before. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that makes sense now. I like Billy Piper's acting there because she, as she came away from the TV, you could just slowly see her face drop as she she thinks, but well, she realizes the fact that the doctor's left her, even though yeah. it's not true. But that's what she thinks. She is brilliant. No, not the gherkin. 
Yeah, that, that, that is pretty uh, EastEnders-y. This is the second crossover with EastEnders after Dimensions in Time. <laughs> Madam, what year is this? <laughs> I love that. Well, I like the fact that um, Big Ben is under construction. And it is now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it is in real life now. <laughs> yeah. The Sadine must have hit it again. Now all we can do is run and hide and I'm sorry. Now move. So I feel this is quite clever as well. Because obviously the show's just come back. All of a sudden, bang, brand new Doctor again. And everyone probably who hasn't seen the classic series, probably many, many people mm. who tuned into this, is a bit like, whoa! Yeah. So the fact that Rose is leading the story is, is, is quite a big comfort for, for yeah. people probably at the time. Well, the audience would then relate to Rose because she's the only familiar face. Well, and uh, and Jackie and Mickey. But, yeah. So they they see what's happening through their perspective. I've got to say, it's really weird talking about like at the time because at the time I would have seen this. I don't remember it that well because I would have been oh, four years old, I think. Yeah, we, we would both be four. Yeah. Even though I look 20 years older than me, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, I didn't even see this, to be honest. I didn't start watching Doctor Who until The Impossible Planet, I remember. I viewed. Think it was series three that well, I, I was properly engaged, but it was always on in the background. Yeah. Like, I think the first memory I have is Parting of the Ways. Yeah. Of it to being there. I was too busy playing the Thomas trains or whatever, but. <laughs> But it was all in the background, I remember that. Mm. It's always been there. It's always been there in the background, definitely. Brenda, how would that be better? I like the ship as well, because it's just a big rock. <laughs> I, just like, I don't know why I like that, but it's, there's, it's not very fancy. It's, it's just this imposing rock coming over. Well, there's, um, there's quite a lot, in the, a lot of that, isn't there, in um, the RTD era, about... Even the TARDIS, like all the ships, all the futuristic sets are very grungy and very yes. dark. It's not like like white corridors, no. pristine spaceship sort of thing. It's, it's yeah, very it's sort of grungy and, and organic and yeah, yeah, and worn and, and battered and mm. used. And especially after the time war, that makes sense for the TARDIS to look like that as well. Yeah. I do like this TARDIS. I mean, it's not one of my favourites, but I, I, I like it more in this lighting because you get to the... Series 1 and 2. It's series 3 where it just gets... Yeah, well, I remember it's the Runaway lit. Bride where, it, where they, they start to change that. And it's yeah. like, all of a sudden, because it's so jarring to go from Doomsday to the Runaway Bride because you get the whole departure of, of Rose and the Doctor's crying in the TARDIS and it's, it's, it's lit it, like it's this. only illuminated by the, the console. Yeah, the green it? light. And I love the green uh, light that it gives off. But then you cut to the Runaway Bride and they redo the same scene and it's like... Oh, yeah. Bang. Yeah, so someone, someone's paid the electricity yeah. bill this time around. It's not, hey, who turned off the lights? It's, hey, who turned on the lights? Oh, I don't know. A bit flirty there with Mickey. Well, he's supposed to be her boyfriend. Boyfriend? Well, they, 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 Replacement they, boyfriend. Well, like, no, standby boyfriend. Stand, standing boyfriend. Yeah, because in, in the, it was the empty child with the psychic paper with Jack. So you've got a boyfriend called Mickey Smith, but you consider yourself available. I love the way they speak. That's quite empowering. Stop doing that on the phone. People at work at reception. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and um, the girl. I love that she tries her best. Like she's heard little bits and pieces of knowledge from the doctor. Yeah. And she just tries to bullshit her way through. <laughs> Next to us. You it's great design as well. It's like they, they have no skin. Yeah. What is it? I think is that armor, but it's made out of bone. Yeah, with well, the helmets are like yeah. I think they're supposed to be made out of. They could be made out of like skin and bone of their victims, maybe. Yeah. But the. When they take the mask off, I like it's the like fact. It's like an exoskeleton. exoskeleton. Yeah. The prosthetics in Doctor Who hats off in the, in the new series are so good. Yeah. They sort of make up uh, the bad CGI with the good prosthetic mm. makeup. Yeah, this is the shot I'm talking about. Yeah. The, the, oh. the, the slow zoom. And the way everyone's positioned, the, the choreography where everyone turns, it just all really works. And Harrier turns and people fly down off, fly it's like... I love Tennant's voice, the squeaky thing he does. He got that from Peter Davison, didn't he? He did. Oh, Harrier Jones, and people fly down off. 
I just love this whole scene because he make like it's almost like he's making up the fact that he hasn't been in the episode the whole time, <laughs> and he, he just takes over. Yeah. <laughs> God, considering these lines, he's like Tom Baker, considering the lines were written for the previous Doctor, and he still makes it his own. It's yeah. very impressive. Because he had, the cards are against him there. That's what I was saying earlier, that Tennant sort of, a lot of, the ca- a lot of his Doctor came from him because the script was written for someone else, but all of the little quirks and things he brings to it, that's just all him, his interpretation, you know. Saying that though, hearing the lines, I can hear Eccleston's doctor saying them. Not obviously not the same delivery as Tennant's yeah. doing here, but it's interesting because I didn't know that. But yeah, hearing the lines, I can think. Well, I can imagine Eccleston's, Eccleston's doctor it, saying yeah. that. Well, you're talking about being a new doctor. Obviously, that that wouldn't have happened. So it's obviously been changed a little bit. Yeah, I mean, David Tennant for us, we like his doctor very much, but I think we both agree he's not our favourite. Mm. But I, you, you can't, you could see why. You can't deny he is brilliant. Well, it's yeah, just... I mean, you can see why it is Tom Baker and David Tennant are seen as the best doctors. Nothing to say, Both yeah. of them hit the ground running, and mm. both of them have a consistent performance of their character. Well, I mean, most of the doctors do, mm. to be fair. But... Well, Tom can not... get a little bit too silly. That's yes, the same thing with well, Tom. During, but... during the sort of, yeah, the end, yeah. Season 17 sort of time. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah, they both hit the ground running, yeah. and they're both... Majority of the time, they... Yeah, they're, yeah. they're on top form. Yeah. Now, no choice. No choice. I love the unpredictability of the Doctor. He's like, he does, he does the thing you're not supposed to do, and everyone's like, oh my god. Yeah. But because he's so knowledgeable, he knows no, it's, it's bullshit anyway. It, it's just... I love that. He gives an insult in their language. Brilliant. Yeah. You have no idea what it means, but you don't need to. I've got to say, this this fight is pretty badly choreographed, but. It couldn't really be helped. But I must say, the actors do give it their all, and I know that, because there's behind the scenes of David Tennant and the actor playing the cigarette leader, like, training. Yeah, okay. Um, and really learning the choreography, getting it down to a T. So they, the actors so got a lot it, of effort. So is it the choreography, or is it just the way it's shot? It's the way it's shot, reckon? I think. Because I've seen the way they were training, you know, behind the scenes, and it, they looked pretty good. It's just because it, it, it's very close... It's very close to the action in a bad way, like that. So you can't really see what's happening. Can yeah, you? there's a lot of cutting yeah, there. Yeah, cutting so and it's, it's close. Yeah. It's quite confusing yeah. where where I mean, where both of them are. Yeah. Because yeah, because they're moving pretty quickly. It's quite close up. They keep cutting. So yeah. Yeah. So it's a little the geography of where they are is quite confusing. Yeah. But all of a sudden they're not really far away. Yeah, exactly. And it's a slow motion, which is a bit cool. A bit John Woo. So they go in the space of like a second. We cut like four times. Yeah. And they and they've changed sides. And where's well. his hand? <laughs> and now his hand's see, gone. You didn't see it fall, did you? But they couldn't show that on BBC at that time. No. No second chances. I'm that sort of a man. That's brilliant. Because yeah. I love the fact that he's he's almost like Colin Baker with his mood swings there. He mm. just all of a sudden, like one minute he's like, oh yeah, thanks, big fella. No second chances. And well, that's just... the thing. Yeah, I mean, throughout this, he's so unpredictable. Yeah, he is. That's the perfect way to put it. He's yeah. very unpredictable. When you talk of the, so we've uh... talked about the interior of the TARDIS. What do you think of the exterior of this uh, model? I'm not a fan. I don't imagine you are either. No. It's very... It's like a big block. It and is it's too big. It's too, too wide. Too big. Too square. I don't like the colour. No. I think the idea behind it was that they wanted to make it look like it could take a beating. But yes. it doesn't need to, because the whole point of the TARDIS is that it has the chameleon circuit to make it look different. Yes. It's not supposed to look like this hard thing that can take a beating. It's supposed to look like a shit little police box. Exactly. It's supposed to be camouflaged, isn't yeah. it? And the whole point of it is it's like a, a wolf in sheepskin. The true power is within. On the outside, it's uh, you get the sheepskin to yeah. hide it. It's a message from Torchwood. They say they're ready. Is this the first... No, it's not the first... T- no, it's the Torchwood, is it? No, the first Torchwood reference is... Bad Wolf with The, the Weakest Link. There's oh, a okay. question in that. And uh, she said, she said, what institute... Oh, there's... The, oh, what, oh. She asked a question and the answer was it's Torchwood. Torchwood okay. She goes, no, Torchwood, the android. Death Star Super Ninja. <laughs> no, not older on. Oh, a gherkin! Don't you think she looks tired? 
Yes, type six. <laughs> if I was it, I'd be going. Uh, <laughs> say it again. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty sure that he was counting. Was he? I'm pretty <laughs> sure. He Brilliant. runs away and he's going... That's good, though, because he, he, he's thinking, shit, he's right. <laughs> right, spot the costume. Colin, two doctors, I reckon. That's got to be. Where? What, there, that? that one. That's, that? This waistcoat. Oh, okay. And one of those is, I'll look this up, one of his, uh, David Tennant's outfits from Casanova. Right. You, oh, what that thing he just held I think up. Either that or something else. Yeah. Okay. I think the second Doctor's trousers are in there somewhere. As I look this up, Tennant's costume is very good. Yeah, it's quite minimalist. But, yeah, but, but the coat is—it's it, it's like Jodie. He has a great silhouette with a long coat. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. But I think the minimalist. Sorry, the minimalist look. Yeah. Works well in this era because most of the show is minimalist. Yes. And like yeah, I said, it being a standard definition as well, it, it suits it, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. And this is the only time you see a different part of this this TARDIS. Co- coral TARDIS, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. I wish we'd got to see more of no it. No rails though, a bit of a Death Star situation <laughs> on health and safety, nightmare. Maybe there's a massive crash mat underneath it. Yeah, massive trampoline <laughs> maybe, yeah. Oh. Back to the TARDIS. Same old life. Actually, they say it's Ash, don't they? This the Sycorax ship. Yeah. That's pretty sick, isn't it? They're basically being surrounded by corpses. <laughs> what a Merry Christmas! But I think that's a long run joke as well. That isn't it? Like there's like series series four. There's what an episode later on where the Doctor's like final, finally actual snow. Snow at last or something. Yeah. Oh, I think it's Voyage of the Damned. Yeah. Well, no, I think even Voyage of the Damned it's snowing and that's like the, the ash from the destroyed wreckage of the... T- oh, no, you're right, actually, yeah. It might be the next Doctor, then, where that happens, with the Cybermen. Maybe. Yeah. What the hell? It's over! That was so quick! So, Christmas Invasion. What'd you think? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... I'm just shocked how short it was. Mm. But I think, as you've just said, because we're used to watching, um, and so I, I don't tend to watch new series stories. I, I don't really know why, because I really enjoyed it. But I, I don't know. I maybe just classic Who, just for what, what I know. So more that's nostalgic, maybe what, what I go to. Yeah, maybe mm. more nostalgic. So I'm used to hour and a half, two hours, maybe more of you know a story. Mm. But yeah, just an hour. It felt like. Well, I mean, I don't know if you said this on camera during the thing. I know you just said this off a of camera. But it felt like we were sitting here for five minutes. Yeah. And we didn't feel like I haven't said that much. Crazy. And now it's over and now, and now I've got to talk about it. Um, it was very good. I mean, I must say, for a first Christmas special, uh, as to bridge the gap between series one and two and the fact that uh, the producer and, uh, you know, well, Julie Gardner, Paul Cornell. Phil Collinson. Paul Cornell was the one who wrote Father's Day, isn't he? Um, and Russell, like the fact that they had a big challenge on their hands having to introduce a new Doctor and introduce it to a brand new audience because one season with one Doctor for a new audience probably is a bit brief, you know, because regeneration is a big thing to introduce to someone. The fact that they've only had 13 episodes with the ninth Doctor and all of a sudden then they have to Re- reintroduce yeah. the, the character yeah, over again. Yeah, uh, to, to an audience that has never seen regeneration before. Yeah. It'd be, uh, it, it, it would be a very nerve wracking thing to, to tackle, but they did manage it. Like I said, the fact that they had to do all that in this one episode, this one special, to introduce a new Doctor and everything, um, and a new dynamic with the with the companion, because it's the same companion, obviously, but the, uh, the dynamic is going to be different, because it's a different actor, different chemistry. Um, I think they did a good job of that. And the Sycorax were a very threatening villain. Um, great design, the spaceship was a good design. Visually, it was quite a well-directed episode, except from the fight scene at the end. There were a few shots there where it was like cutting to s- sky behind the Doctor. Then, it, yes. then he was facing the other way around, and he had his back back to the uh, Sycorax, and it was very like jumping all over the place. And the fight scene wasn't particularly well directed, but it's the BBC. They're not going to be, they're not Hollywood with their fight scenes, are they? So it's 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 you know you can you can forgive that. And some of the CGI hadn't aged that well but again 16 years ago with a low budget it's not going to look great so yeah the threat that's the main thing I took from this the threat was very real yes. and like we said um, 
bringing, bringing the threat to Earth makes it more relatable and more scary. It takes a familiar object that's very innocent mm. and makes it scary. Well, yeah. scary. The scene was a bit silly, but it, it, it's still wacky, the fact they take an ordinary object, like, an everyday object, well, every Christmas object. And they turn into something that's going to try and kill you. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And the, the pilot fish, the roboforms, well, they're not called roboforms, and if they're called that in the Runaway Bride, I think. Uh, but they were, they were a good, wacky addition. Can, only on Doctor Who it can happen where you're walking through a market, people are dressed up as Father Christmas, and all of a sudden a flamethrower comes out of their trumpet. It's just so ridiculous, it's brilliant. I think it's quite a good, uh, I don't want to say homage to the Autons, but... They are very Auton-like, aren't they? They are very Auton-like, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, you see Father Christmases, don't you? Mm. Playing instruments, or whatever, yeah, yeah. singing, uh, when you go out mm. at Christmas, don't you? Yeah. Pretty much anywhere you go. Yeah. And it's a bit like Autons, you, you walk past shop window dummies all the time, mm. you know? So, yeah, it's just... A very big thing, I think, in this era to make the ordinary, the mundane, anything you're going to walk past, you know, every day, mm. in, into something that's like from space and yeah. exciting and part yeah. of Doctor Who. The cast did a great job. I must say, they are a solid cast. We've got the sporting characters as well. That helps you get good. It helps you believe the story more. Like if you come across a character that's unrealistic or a bit far fetched in terms of how they act and their mannerisms, then you're not going to believe it, and it will take you out of the illusion. But this illusion works because you're immersed in it because they're just everyday characters that are very believable like all yes. the sporting cars and Harriet Jones I just uh, I, I like the fact that we've gone from her being quite an innocent sweet character in Aliens of London and World War 3 uh, to now being this sort of Churchill-esque fighter mm. that will not take any shit and is going to fight these aliens and stand up for humanity even stand against the Doctor which is very interesting and made for a very cool scene and a big clash Clash of heads there between those two, which was a very good scene, and showing the Doctor's brutality a bit when he, you know, basically uh, gets her fired from her job in a way, or yeah. gets her re-elected, uh, and it shows how malevolent he can be when he wants to be, which is very just good stuff, you know, part of the Doctor's character. Yeah. So marks out of ten, what would you give it? I, I would give it probably a generous. I'd give it a generous 7 out of 10 because of how well they pulled off uh, having to reintroduce regeneration to the series and to a new audience and just because like, what we've just mentioned now about uh, the juxtapositions between uh, having it being quite realistic with this alien threat, that was done so well I, I think it deserves a strong 7 and David Tennant's performance, he just knocked it out of the park. As soon as he came out of that TARDIS on the Sycorax ship I was like Wow, and he just commanded the scene. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, and Harriet, like I said, sports camera is brilliant. Very well directed, apart from the fight scene. So yeah, with all those elements mixed together, that's what's made me want to give it a seven out of ten. I will give it. I think it's very bold. Obviously, this is the mm. first Christmas special that they've done. So Russell Davis has gone right. We're gonna do. We're gonna have Doctor Who at Christmas. Yeah, let's go. And all I out. think it was on. Um, was it on the Radio Times or something? And, and that was one of the first things that David Tennant was on. Um, okay. Publicising Doctor Who. And it obviously had David Tennant's face on the front of the Christmas tree and Billy Piper and the tires in the background. Oh, yeah. It paid off. It really did pay off. Mm. And, and it paved the way... Well, when would you have Christmas specials? All the way up till End of Capaldi, wasn't it? Yeah, twice upon a time. And it definitely was a success. At, um, I mean, 12 years of TV, that's unheard of these days. Let alone, obviously... 58 years now Doctor Who's been running and yeah. then even the new series uh, yeah I'm going to give it a 7 as well I believe yeah. yeah I think it's a fair score for that one yeah yeah, yeah. I think it hasn't aged well particularly but the performance I mean saying that I watch black and white Doctor Who so, exactly. that, that so it doesn't bother us, does it? No. Well to us this is like sort of quite cinematic especially watching, oh, definitely. Yeah, watching yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the older episodes so that's that that's the new series Shock Horror which is the first <gasps> thing First time we've ever mentioned the new series. God forbid! <laughs> on here. Um, yeah, it was a success. Yeah. If, if you want us to do more new series, then uh, leave a comment on this video. Not any other video. This video. Uh, if you want us to do more new series. Otherwise, if you do not leave a comment, then we will just think no one's interested and we'll do more classics. So, win-win situation, I guess. No, there we go. So, um, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And uh, 
Yeah. And Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> no, it's still no, it's November twenty fifth, right? We now, won't <laughs> we won't be doing anything before I won't be doing anything between Christmas and New Year, probably on the channel. So uh, yes, Happy New Year, and uh, we will be back probably for more collabs, and we'll, there'll be more videos in the New Year. <laughs> so you've just seen another one of my videos. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to keep watching and subscribe. Leave a comment as well to Louis Marcus's YouTube channel. That's me, by the way, in case you were wondering.